of you are probably contemplating leaving uh, the United States Babylon. If not, then this video won't really interest you. But if you have come to the conclusion that Babylon, spoken of in the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, after carefully checking all the descriptions, uh, descriptors of Babylon and Chaldea uh, and Ur, you have seen that compared to any other nation or entity on earth, that they most coincide with the United States. If you think it's still the Catholic Church, or it's just a system, or it's just some other thing out there, or that Babylon was destroyed and is just the Babylon of history, then you need to, one, open your history books, two, open your Bible, and three, open your mind. Now, I don't tell people to just open your mind completely because there's a lot of junk out there. Be careful and have your filters on and be careful what you let come into your mind. But look in history and try to find where Babylon, ancient Babylon, was ever destroyed. You won't find it. It's not in the history books. But I challenge you to look it up. Try to find it in some history book. Um, the only way you're going to find it is if you write your own history book and say that Babylon was destroyed. It was never destroyed. It's a fact. It was taken over. But the actual city was never city-state was never destroyed. It just fell in disuse after many, many, many centuries and millennia. Even at the time of Jesus Christ or Yeshua the Messiah, even at that time, the apostles and brethren living in the world and some Israelites that had gone out of Israel were living in Babylon. It's even mentioned. It was still in use 2,000 years ago. It was still a city that was being lived in. And it had been conquered by um, the Persians many centuries before that. Babylon was never actually destroyed. It was just taken over. The scripture talks about Babylon. The scriptures that talk about Babylon say it will be utterly destroyed. There's no doubt about it. When you read about prophetic Babylon in Revelation, in Jeremiah, in Isaiah, in Habakkuk, you see that it is something, it is an entity in the end of times, just before the return of Yeshua the Messiah back to earth. It is some entity, some nation, some land that is going to be utterly destroyed. There, it says there will be nothing left of it, no people left there. It's, uh, there's no question or doubt about how destroyed Babylon will be. If, that's what you've, if you've come to that conclusion, great. Don't be panicked. This is what I want to try to get across to you. Don't be panicked. You don't have to go running out of the United States or Canada. You don't have to um, uh, flee in a, in a panic. Now, I know some of my other videos say, get up, run, flee. But that's for the people who have their arms folded and are waiting for a dream or a sign from Yahweh to tell them to leave Babylon. Many people have that attitude. That might happen. But I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't even know if it's necessary that you receive your vision, dream, or uh, whatever from Yahweh. Because it says it in the Bible. If it says it already seven times in the Bible to get out of Babylon so that you don't participate in its sins. And if you think you're not participating in Babylon's sins, you're kidding yourself. Because if you're working in Babylon, you're paying taxes. Your tax money is going toward all of these movements to help uh, people sponsor abortions, to have um, homosexual lesbian rights, and all other kinds of abominations, ripping Ten Commandment plaques out of town squares, which is probably the least of the problems, but it's just to show how low and how um, corrupt and uh, immoral and amoral the country has become. Do you want to continue being part of that in any way, shape, or form? Whether you've received a sign or a signal from Yahweh now or whenever, don't, wouldn't you want to get out of there? If you were living in Sodom and Gomorrah, or in Egypt, or in any place that is considered negative by Yahweh, would you want to, be, would you want to continue living there? Especially when there's seven commands to get out. Look for my video that get, it says the um, get up, flee, get out, run, get out of Babylon. And there I give the seven scriptures in the Old and New Testament that say to get out of her. If Lot, remember Lot who left Sodom and Gomorrah, he had to be dragged out of there by the angels. If he had known about it, uh, that he should get out even ten years before it was going to be destroyed, should he have wanted to hang around and stay there for ten more years knowing that it's a vile, disgusting place? It says that you are participating in the sins. 
It says also, if you stay there, you'll receive of her plagues. Her plagues are described. She's going to be destroyed. She's going to be blown up, destroyed, bombed. It says that the Yahweh is going to send arrows. Archers are going to shoot their arrows. You can try to imagine what the my, my modern version of arrows might be. It says not one of those arrows will miss. Now, this is, um, let's see here. We're on August uh, 6th. It's August 6, 2009. Recently in the news, you may have noticed that they said that two Russian submarines were off the coast of the U.S. This is not really a big deal. There's been a lot of Russian activity going down with Chavez in Venezuela, and they're always out there in the ocean. And our submarines are around Russia, too. But sooner or later, and from some country or another or group of countries, those arrows are going to come against Babylon and destroy her. Do you want to play a waiting game? Do you want to play chicken? Okay, so if you've decided, yes, you've got to get out, I want to talk to you people now. You decided you want to get out. All right, now for you, I'm going to say, great, but don't go running out today unless you feel so strongly that you need to get out, then do it. But I have seen so many people rush out of Babylon too quickly. They run out of money. They don't have a plan. They don't know where they're going to go. They don't know who they're going to stay with. They run out of money, and then they have to call up their family with their tail between their legs, and they're begging for a loan so they can buy some plane tickets to get back to the United States because they don't know where to go. And the next thing they're going to be is homeless out of the U.S. Okay, so now that I put a little bit of balance or fear in you, I'm not saying don't leave because many of us have left United States and we live outside of the country. Many people emigrate from one country to the other. I'm just saying you have to be ready and you have to plan and it's in mostly in your mind. You have to be ready to lower your standard of living. You can't expect to come out of the United States, even if you do have some money saved up, and to live the same way you live there. That's just not going to happen. Now, when you come out of the United States, there are people in countries of Latin America, Africa, Asia, who live as well as you do. But the people in those countries who live as well as you do are the very wealthy, are the upper class, or the upper middle class. And it costs a lot to live the way a middle class American lives in the United States to do that outside of the U.S. So when you come out, you can't expect to live the same way you do. Otherwise, you're going to use up all your savings very quickly. And that's a big disadvantage because you don't have a job, you don't have a visa, and you don't have an endless supply of money. Unless you're one of those rare people who does have an endless supply of money. And then I have to say to you, how does Yahweh want you to use that? Maybe you could be helping other brothers, other sisters, uh, widows, people, orphans that want to come out of Babylon too. When we come out of Babylon, we need to analyze ourselves. Do we want to be generous or do we want to be selfish? Now is the time to start putting into practice more than ever the helping that person who doesn't have clothing or who's in jail or who needs a roof over their head or who needs a meal or a Bible. There, we need to learn how to think as a group. We want to work together. It's the body of Messiah. It's not just the hand of Messiah or it's not just your John's church of Messiah. It's, we have to work together, and that means a little bit of sacrifice. That means thinking outside of ourselves and not being so selfish, not just thinking of oneself and um, doing it my way and just for me. So think about other people when you come out. Try to be generous. I have met many generous people who have been helping me, have helped me in the past. I'm trying to turn around and do the same thing to other people as they come out. But when you come out of the U.S., Try to analyze how, what kind of person you're going to be, to turn over a new leaf, to really be in the image and likeness of your Father in heaven and of Yeshua. I wish you blessings, and I'll talk to you soon.